Hey dancers, welcome back to Twin Talks Ballet. My name is Kirsten. Don't we all need some good news this year? I think if there's anything that we could all use, it is the spread of good cheer and good news and not only the encouragement to share that and dwell on that for yourself, but the permission to do so. Simply put, I think that this year has understandably been very tough in a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. And it is real and valid to focus on that and to feel what you're feeling. However, how often this year have we given airtime to good news when I think we've needed it the most? I think for a lot of us, myself included, not often enough. So with Thanksgiving coming up this week, I want to just inspire us all to spread some good cheer, to be grateful and thankful for what we do have, some blessings that we have in our life. And I think if you're watching this channel, you're probably a dancer. And so I wanted to share with you, just from my perspective as a dancer, what I'm specifically thankful for in terms of my ballet journey and how ballet has added so much value to my life personally, because I know that it's tough, especially this year. How many of y'all have been dancing on Zoom and you're like, I don't feel the same love for it that I have before in person, or maybe you don't feel that same sense of passion and reward, and it's making you wonder if you still wanna do this. That's totally understandable. And by the way, as a mindset coach, I'm here to support you if it actually is time to contemplate what your next steps are with ballet. Do you wanna continue it? Are you continuing for the right reasons for you, for healthy reasons, for wholesome reasons? Um, or is it time to move on? That's something I help a lot of dancers with as a mindset coach, um, and also helping them to transition once they make a decision. That being said, uh, in this video, I do want to uh, start a little bit of a maybe a thought trend, hopefully for you, in sharing what I'm thankful for. And I would love for you to type in the comments what you're thankful for in your ballet journey, um, or what you're thankful that ballet has given to you, added to your life. Um, what has been the value for you? What are you grateful for, essentially? So I'd love to hear in the comments. Um, here are the things that. I'm thankful for. So the first thing is that by the age of 24, when a knee injury led me to leave ballet at the professional level, what I am thankful for, even though that was a really hard experience, is that by the age of 24, I essentially, when I looked back on it and I spent time with other peers who were kind of just now starting a career path, a life trajectory, a long-term vision, I realized that ballet gave the, me the opportunity to feel as if I've already lived a very full life by the time I was 24. I was literally leaving a career by the time so many young people are starting theirs. And I just think that is something that is so cool because when I was deciding on my next steps and, you know, walking into that and building this business that I have now, this life that I have now, I could have been discouraged, like so womp womp about how like life will never be as good. Everything will always be second best. But instead, I was just so I, I'm still so thankful that that experience of really striving towards something and having a long-term goal from a very young age and for really putting myself out there and doing like very adult things since I was young, I actually already had so much perspective and um, insight about who I was and like what I wanted in the world and what I'm good at and like all these things like this kind of clarity clarity that you can only gain through action. I had so much of that already. And I think so many dancers can say the same, even if you're not aware of it, I think one day you'll be able to see that that is the case, hopefully. So that's one thing I'm really thankful for. The second thing is that ballet has truly given me so many memories that I will hold for a lifetime that will continue to provide me joy and just gratitude like wow I can't believe I got to do that what I really see memories as is like this this treasure like your memories are so valuable you can go back to a positive memory anytime you want and still feel those same feelings of like what it was like to be there what it was like to perform and of course sometimes like memories are a little too fresh we can we can just feel sad that we don't have that anymore and so it's we're not always in the place to like revisit our memories because it creates a sense of longing that's not very happy for us. Um, but when you are ready to contemplate what was good about your past, it can be so beautiful to just have gratitude for the fact that you have these pictures 
or experiences or sounds or feelings like in your mind that you can remember forever and be like, wow, I know what it's like to step out on a stage in front of 2,500 people and to do something that's like so nerve wracking, but then to do it and then leave the stage and be like, ah, I can't believe I just did that. Like so much adrenaline. Like that is a high that so few people get to reach. Hey dancers, I'm gonna just briefly pause today's video to thank the generous sponsor, which is as usual, balletok.com. I'm so grateful for their ongoing support. Of course, I partner with them on a monthly basis to tell you guys about Zerly Tights, my favorite brand of tights. And I'm so grateful that they support this channel so that I can continue to share these messages with dancers all over the world. The way that you can support today's generous sponsor is to order Zerly tights through the ballyok.com website. Um, Zerly tights are, as I've talked about many times, my absolute favorite brand of tights, very truly from the black tights and the Z1 model, the Z2 perform model. You can get them, by the way, with a back seam or no back seam. There are two different colors of pink, if I'm not mistaken, and I just love the variety they offer. In addition to the Z3, um, I think it's repair tights. These are so cool because they actually have an added amount of compression so that your legs can really rest and recuperate through a, a better blood flow to ease tension, recover faster between workouts while also wearing them with a cute little outfit, like a wintry outfit, you know? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like to wear skirts and dresses with black tights underneath and black boots. And these tights are both very cute and very productive and functional because it'll leave your legs feeling so much better and so much more refreshed when you go into the studio the next day. Ballyok.com also has a um, tights recycling program where you can get a free shipping label, send away your old ugly tights that you're not going to wear anymore. <laughs> They'll recycle them, which is so awesome and very, very cool, very unique as well. And then you get a sweet little discount code on your next order of new Zerly tights. So again, order Zerly tights from Ballyok.com and... Thank you again, ballyok.com, for sponsoring this video. Another thing that I'm so thankful for is that ballet, it requires a lot of faith. It really does. Uh, faith in yourself. Um, for me, it's definitely pulled on my faith in God so many, so many times because, like, I think we know, like, there are so many struggles that can come up in being a dancer, whether that be through injury or working with a teacher who's not very nice to you or just, like, wondering if you're going to get in and going to after your auditions or, you know, just doing a lot of things that can be tough and they can be risky. But building that muscle of faith in whatever it is, faith in your abilities, belief in what you can do, belief in what is possible, that's strong enough to lead you to do all these things, that is strong enough to, you know, cause you to do things that are tough but worth it. Like, to have a vision that's worth all that is so, so, so cool. And, yeah, to have built this muscle in my mind of, like, faith, faith in what's possible, faith in how it's possible to overcome things. Like for me, like I didn't have this long, prosperous ballet career that I had hoped I would have. And it was so tempting to look at my brief time in a professional company as like a failure because I didn't make it to this certain level or I didn't do this repertoire that I wanted to do. I didn't get this recognition. I didn't spend the time that I had envisioned I would spend in a company. But to see how the disappointments I went through have been redeemed into like a purpose or like a way to empathize with others and to help them through a similar thing or to help them, you know, avoid going through a similar thing. That is just so cool to me. And again, it kind of ties into this idea of faith. I think to be a dancer, no matter what you put your faith in, it requires a lot of it. And um, I think that's something that you need in order to keep reaching new heights in your life, whatever you do. You need faith <laughs> um, in order to make a reach, in order to get places you never thought you'd go. I'm also thankful that ballet gives this reminder that when something is uncomfortable, that's not actually always a sign to give up, but maybe to lean in. Like so often we have this instinct as humans that when something gets uncomfortable, you just stop. And especially if you don't have a strong like purpose or why behind like the reason you're 
going through this discomfort, of course you would just be like, it's not worth it, I'm gonna stop. Like, if you don't wanna be a better dancer, you're gonna put your leg up in a dodge and be like, gross, that's uncomfortable, just like put it down. <laughs> or say like, hey, can I go to the bathroom? I'm gonna come back for the, the next combination. Actually having that framework in ballet to rewire the way my brain associates to discomfort has been so, so helpful. Like this is an incredible skill to have in life, truly. To get pretty deep here, I'll say that one thing I'm also thankful for is the fact that going through an injury with ballet and really experiencing what it's like to be like so face to face with my own like limitations in my body, it actually woke me up to how entitled I was about like what my body should do for me. And it led me to have so much more like gratitude and appreciation for the, the way that like our feet like change shape to actually like point like that. Or our legs just like, we can do a ground butt line, go up here. Like it doesn't even matter how high it is. It's just like the fact that we can do all this stuff is like, wow. When you are not able to walk for a while and then you watch people jumping, it's like, how do we jump like that all the time and not break? And then when you actually get to jump again, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much my body actually has graciously extended past its natural limits so many times so that I could do what I do. And yet before I used to have this very entitled attitude about like, oh, my body should be able to do all these things. I should be able to turn out and do all these things. And now I'm like, Sheesh, that's crazy, I can do that, that's awesome. I'm also so thankful for the fact that ballet gives us the opportunity to do something simply because we enjoy it and to share that enjoyment with other people. It is such a blessing to be able to do things in your life that don't serve like such a utilitarian purpose, but provide such a sense of like meaning and fulfillment and uh, like excitement and expression. And it allows you to um, explore your individuality and your own perspective and just to create beauty. Like y'all, if there's anything 2020 has shown me in terms of like the value of the arts is that, especially in times like this, beauty in the world and being able to see it is actually worth so much. Inspiration is actually worth so much. It's not just some light, fluffy, like feel good thing. When especially you're in a dark time and you have inspiration, what inspiration is to me is like a vision of what is possible paired with this feeling that you could do it and maybe even a desire to pull towards that vision. To me, that's what inspiration is and it's worth so much. It gets your imagination going to be reminded that there is beauty in the world and that you could be a part of creating that, that is so cool and so valuable. <laughs> like, don't we all want to know that there is beauty in life? <laughs> I think more than ever, we want to know that. And if you're um, an artist of any kind, um, you're a part of creating that and sharing that. And that is so cool and so valuable. I'm also so thankful for the fact that ballet develops your mind and your character as a person, or it can, <laughs> doesn't always happen by accident, I'll say, it can develop your mind and your character as a person just as much as it develops your body. It can be so inspirational to look at how much your body has changed since you started dancing. Like this once uh, like concrete seeming thing of like, well, this is how far I can bend backwards, or this is how high I can get my leg up. When we first encounter those physical limitations, it can feel like, well, yeah, I can't get my leg any higher. But the art and practice of dancing, that leads you to push those boundaries to where like years later, you're able to like get your leg up here or just do all these things and uh, kind of create a new look, a new shape, a new like range or a built capabilities within your body that wasn't there before, I think it is also like a physical reminder of what can also happen mentally. You can mentally change even more than that. Your mind doesn't have uh, the same limitations as your body. It has far fewer. I don't know how many it has, if any. I don't know. Um, 
who's to say? <laughs> but I think that's what's so cool. Like your character and your mind and your strength can develop so much. Like if your body can do that, imagine how much you can develop as a person. I'm also thankful that ballet provides this lesson that excellence really is in the details, which is one of my favorite sayings that a teacher said growing up. She always said, Excellence is in the details, and it really is. Next, I'm really thankful that ballet is a universal language, and I know this is a common idea for sure, but so worth sharing, I think. It, it is not to be underestimated that ballet can be appreciated by anyone, and it's something that is actively appreciated in so many countries across the entire world. It's something that's been actively adopted by so many cultures and kind of made into their own approach to ballet. But I think that is so incredible that dancers from all over the world can connect and share experiences that transcend um, our ability to communicate through words. Next, I'm of course thankful that ballet brings people together. That is just so special. Some of the friends I've made in ballet are it just they're just some of the most special people I know and some of the weirdest as well but like I would include myself in that camp for sure um yes so the ability of ballet to like bring people together around a shared experience is so powerful lastly I really want to share this one with you just let it sink in I am so thankful that we as dancers are blessed and privileged enough to be able to spend time and effort and care and energy on something as silly as the shape of our toes or the exact degree of rotation in our legs, the shape of our fingers, like these little things that, you know, in ballet, they're really important. Like just taking a second to think of how crazy it is that you are able to take so much time out of your life to care about those little things because of perhaps all the other ways that you're taken care of in your life. Like you're afforded the ability to care about such minute things and it doesn't mean they don't matter, but just kind of putting that into perspective as like any dancer is so blessed to be able to spend time and energy on little things like that in order to really perfect their own art. And it can seem like derogatory or meaningless when I put it that way, like, oh, how silly it is that we spent all this time when, you know, people are starving in the world and we're, we're, you know, like here just fixating on little things like that. Um, sure, you can think of it that way. But at the same time, I really want to emphasize that there is also such a value added to the world in like just that moment that leaves you breathless of watching a court of ballet doing La Baya Dare and just moving like 24 dancers or 18 dancers all in sync and how that just like takes your breath away and it just reminds you of what humans are capable of and it maybe makes the person sitting there in the audience think like if they can do that what can I do you know it does provide such value to the world and I just I want to say that there is meaning to it and of course like it is important to take care of others needs and like there you know people who are doing humanitarian work and things like that is so 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 important but don't for a second think that um, it, just because there are needs in the world that um, you shouldn't be allowed to do what you're doing and that it doesn't provide any value relatively it does. So dancers, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I would love to hear in the comments what you are thankful for um, in your ballet journey. I would genuinely love to hear, so please do comment down below. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and were encouraged by it. I really hope you were, and I will see you next week. Bye.